Hey guys, welcome to episode number 78. Today's Friday and it's Fan Friday. And today I had a request for a feeding video. Uh, and the request was um, to show my turtles eating uh, bloodworms. But uh, I decided to expand that and just do a, a feeding video on my fish and my turtles. So I'm going to start with the fish. And uh, these guys, like I've said before, get fed three times a day. Um, they get fed an abnormal amount of food just because there are so many fish in the tank. Uh, I need to try to keep them all fed. And uh, the filter um, is rated for a tank uh, two to three times this size. So um, it's able to keep up and I do frequent water changes on it. But as you can see... Um, even though I've already fed them twice today, they're ready for more. Um, so this is primarily a um, veggie-based flake food. Um, it's got a lot of spirulina content in it. And uh, it looks like a lot of food. But as you'll see, within a minute or so, there will be no food left. Uh, at the surface and uh, everything that you see here that's kind of sinking to the bottom will just kind of collect in the java moss down here and uh, I do have one crayfish in here he's kind of the uh, the bum crayfish he uh, had a bad molt he's over in the corner there if you can see him he's just a white the white blob in the corner. He lost a claw. He lost all the legs on one side, except for one. So he kind of hobbles around. Um, but he'll uh, he'll clean up all of the the food that's in the the Java moss. And uh, these guys will actually, when there's nothing left uh, at the surface, they'll actually start uh, picking at the at the Java moss to get all the food out of there. So. Um, that's feeding the, uh, the fish. Um, again, Molly's, uh, primarily, uh, a veggie eater. So, um, giving them a, a flake food that's high in veggie content is, uh, is good for them. Um, I do mix it up and give them some angelfish flake every once in a while, uh, just to give them... Uh, something different, but they tend to like this flake and uh, They do a really good job of cleaning it up and uh, as you can see some of the, the females are fairly large, so um, They're definitely getting enough to eat some of the the males um, seem a little a little on the skinny side um, But there's not a whole lot I can do about that because they're just chasing the females around all day and they're not eating so that's that's up to them to decide, but uh, I do I do feed this tank more than most people would feed a tank this size. But like I said, that's all right. And then uh, on the big show, um, these guys should probably be sleeping right now for the most part. I've already woken them up once or twice here, so let's see if I can wake them up again. I just uh, put my finger in the water and it usually usually wakes them up. Uh, I do that sometimes if they're all sleeping and uh, I'm about to feed them. So what I've got here is uh, blood worms. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing this in most cases because um, these guys uh, are really vicious when it comes to blood worms but uh, I did have the request so we'll see how long it takes them to start uh, attacking these blood worms um, I have had them uh, bite at one another um, when I feed them blood worms uh, just because they get so excited at the smell but uh, hopefully um, They'll do what they normally do and either inhale it um, and 
not make it available for the others to, to fight for it. Or they'll just kind of run away with it at the first sign of trouble. But as you can see, those first two have already eaten um, a bloodworm cube. And these guys are sniffing. Um, there's a bunch that are now kind of strewn all about on the, the substrate. The, uh, the fish are starting to get into the action too. Uh, you'll see they're enjoying it quite a bit. And they're, they're taking advantage of the fact that the turtles are still sleeping for the most part. Um, so they're definitely getting more than they, they normally would. But uh, now the turtles are activated. And uh, they're looking. These guys are down here eating off the sand. This is the last gumdrop left. And it looks like Speedy got it. I think that's his second one. So he just had two, he just ate two complete uh, gumdrops here. And I think some of the other ones that were um, sleeping uh, didn't, didn't actually get their fair share. But now there's just a giant mess of uh, blood worms. You see all the red blood worms on the bottom here. And uh, they'll go about cleaning this up here for the next half hour or so once they realize that there are no more uh, gumdrops in the tank. And uh, yeah, that's, that's blood worms for the most part. Actually, I'm... I'm surprised and I'm, I'm actually kind of glad that there wasn't any fighting this time. Um, when they're all paying attention, waiting to be fed, uh, if I drop the blood worms in, they will, um, they will get nasty with one another and that's just, you know, um, you know, trying to assert their dominance and uh, grab the food before anyone else can. But you see they are pretty good at sniffing out the blood worms and uh, picking them off the sand. Um, occasionally they'll get a piece of uh, coral or sand uh, with their with their bite as well but um, you know they do chew on the coral anyways to kind of trim their beaks. You'll notice uh, diamondback terrapins have a, a beak, a fairly pronounced beak and that's because in the wild, uh, you know, their two main uh, diet sources actually are uh, crabs and snails. Um, so they need that beak to uh, to hunt in the wild. But uh, they will trim it on the uh, the coral in the tank from time to time. So uh, if they get a little bit of they get a little bit of that while they're eating the blood worms. That's okay. So they're pretty civil uh, for the time being, um, especially when they're just kind of sniffing out what's left on the bottom. But um, the biggest source of controversy definitely comes from the the whole gumdrops that uh, that I drop into the water. So. Uh, I think I surprised them for the most part this time, so there wasn't any fighting. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's feeding time. Um, that was a, a treat for these guys. I typically just feed them once a day, and I feed them in the morning. Um, I feed them uh, Missouri uh, floating uh, aquatic turtle pellets, and uh, that's a pretty pretty good. Uh, turtle food. Uh, that's their primary source of food. But, um, you know, if they ever, if they ever decided to eat a fish, they could, they could eat one of those as well. But, uh, the, uh, the blood worms are a treat. Uh, it is something that I do feed to hatchlings, uh, very early on. If, uh, if they don't want to, or if they, they don't accept, um, you know, chopped up, uh, pellets. Um, any turtle should go after blood worms uh, readily. So uh, if you have a picky eater um, early on, blood worms is a good thing to, to start off with. And those were the frozen, the frozen blood worms, the gumdrops. 
Um, I've tried freeze-dried bloodworms and freeze-dried uh, krill and other shrimp and stuff, and um, yeah, I, I just don't think the the same nutritional value is there with the freeze-dried stuff. And uh, honestly, it doesn't smell, you know, the same as as uh, something fresh. So uh, they don't really go for it as much, but. I say I just spooked them there for no no apparent reason. Um, but yeah, there's plenty of blood worms still left. I'm sure they'll kind of uh, find the rest of them in amongst the the driftwood. And if they don't get them, the fish definitely will. The fish are cleaning them up. Uh, but that's six turtles and six uh, cubes of of blood worms there. So. Maybe I'll try this again when uh, all the turtles are waiting to be fed to see the uh, the different reaction um, when they're all prepared to, to eat. I kind of surprised them here, but that time it was pretty civil. Worked out in my favor. Might not have been as fun for you guys to watch, but uh, at least the turtles didn't bite each other. Alright guys, see you later.